What good folks it's Darktree19 and welcome back to another What If Naruto Was Venom Part 3 so like comment subscribe and share but besides all that enjoy the video. Chapter 3 Doing What Is Righteous Eno had always been a curious girl growing up with a need to know just about everything around her and while she was a bit bossy, her father claimed it came from her mother's side, she always felt it was for the best. Eno felt that if she didn't know anything, then what was the point of being smart, and flaunting the fact that she knew things around over others. Hence the reason why Eno was currently, in the middle of the night, looking up at the ever so large Namikaze estate with wide eyes, and then smiled deviously before searching for a means to enter the home. Granted she didn't even know that it even was the Namikaze estate, but the fact remained that when she had learned of Naruto's new home, she went to see it for herself, and see just what she could dig up about Naruto. She had heard the rumors concerning Naruto having a female slave with him, as she had admittedly might have helped in that regard to the rumors, and had seen the said slave right before the Chonin preliminaries. From said rumors, more had gone through Konoha faster than her Akimichi teammate goes through barbecue food, and if there was one thing Ino liked to do besides spread rumors was to learn the truth hidden behind the rumors. That way she could easily make it seem like she was the one that knew everything and be praised for it too. Finding her way in, Ino found the inside of the Namikaze home to be quite an interesting feel to it, and found that it a certain family feel to it. That in itself was slightly unusual to her, as she always felt that the bigger the clan, the less family connection one had to them since there were so many, and Ino thought of the Hyuga clan with their members being so serious when it came to such things. Granted the Abarame clan didn't seem to have that family feel and they were smaller, but, well she secretly believed that the bug users had some form of telepathy that linked them to each other. Pretty nice place for a guy who was an orphan since he was little kid, thought Ino, as she wondered how Naruto could even afford this home much less have a slave, and only by doing a little digging could she get it. Making her way up the stairs, Ino peeked into most of them to see that they were in fact empty, meaning Naruto was here in the home all alone, and continued looking for the blonde that had changed completely in what seemed to be a few days. Looking around some more, Ino heard what sounded like voices in a single room, and wondered who it was that Naruto was with in that one room. As she got closer, the voices weren't really two voices, but one high-pitched one that was female, and it was calling out Naruto's name repeatedly. At first, Ino thought something had happened to the blonde, and his slave was seeing if he was actually alright. Hurrying to the room, Ino soon learned that Naruto's slave wasn't calling out his name in a panic, but rather it sounded like, pleasure? Opening the door slightly to see inside before she made her entrance if she absolutely had to, Ino's eyes widened in surprise, as she saw a naked Tsuchi kin on a large bed letting out a scream out in sheer pleasure, and Naruto equally as naked with his head in between her legs eating her out. That's it Naruto-sama. That's the spot right there. Don't stop Naruto-sama, said Kin, as her hips bucked, and Naruto kept them under control with his hands on her hips while his tongue assaulted his slave's pussy. He can't do that. We're too young for that kind of thing, thought Ino, as she saw Kin gripping the bed sheets with one hand, and Naruto's blonde hair with the other. Who is your master? Tell us who is your master right now Kin-chan, said Naruto, as she assaulted her clit with his tongue, and channeled chakra into it to make the pleasure that was running through Kin's body skyrocket. Naruto-sama. My master is and always will be Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she screamed out, and came hard into Naruto's face while he licked up her juices. Yummy, said Naruto, as he looked down at Kin's glowing body, and the ever-familiar look of satisfaction that was across his face. No more Naruto-sama. I'm too tired to continue, said Kin, as she had been taken every way possible tonight after Naruto came back from his training session with Jiraiya that involved him summing toads, and it required her master be out in a large area. Though deep down, Kin felt ashamed she couldn't last as long as Naruto, and wished she had half the stamina he did if just to drain him for one night. She had been training like Naruto had told her to since more stamina for her meant longer lovemaking for them and more pleasure to be had. It's alright Kin-chan, we won't try to pressure you into continuing when you've reached your limit, and you also have to remember that we have QB and me so the stamina we would have normally that is Jounin level is much higher than that with him, said Naruto kissing Kin's forehead, which she moaned into along with his hands touching her body, and let out a sigh of pleasure when he started kissing her neck. It was unfortunately stopped, when the two heard a gasp, and a yelp that was followed by a thump. Noise from behind their door. Naruto gave Kin a quiet motion with his finger before turning into his humanized venom form and made his way to the door while Kin silently got on her robes to cover her form up. The last thing Kin wanted was for some pervert to try sneaking a peek in on her and Naruto going at it like rabbits. Once Naruto saw Kin was covered, he opened the door fully to find a dazed Yamanaka Ino having tripped on her own sandals, and hit the hard wood in the wall behind her just before hitting the hard wooden floor. When Ino looked up, 
she had a cheesy embarrassed look on her face, and it was then the platinum blonde knew she was in very deep shit. Hi Naruto. Um, lovely night this is, isn't it? Said Ino, as she tried to figure out how she could get out of this situation, and wondered if maybe using her clan's mind jutsus would do the trick. You are in really big trouble Ino. You're trespassing on clan grounds. Our clan grounds and as such what we do to you on it is done at our discretion outside the jurisdiction of the Hokage making the authority we have right now all the more powerful, said Naruto narrowing his eyes at Ino and wondered just what exactly he should do with her. Clan? You are in a clan? Said Ino, as this was news to her, as her father seemed to be very hesitant about Naruto being the topic of the day, and her mother was very adamant about her little girl staying away from him. The last of two actually. However, that is irrelevant to the situation right now, and what is relevant is the fact that you and our home interrupting our alone time with Kin-chan, said Naruto, as he saw Ino blush at that, and so was Kin with her red robes that hugged her form. Alone time? You were having sex with her. We're too young for that. I could go tell the Hokage and he could charge you with rape, said Ino, as she had hoped that threat would help get her off the hook, and maybe a good bargaining chip down the road if she needed it for later. Rape? Naruto-sama didn't rape me since I'm his slave you dumb blonde. Sorry Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she looked at Naruto, and looked embarrassed since Naruto was also a blonde too. No apologies Kin-chan. We knew you were talking about Ino, said Naruto seeing the worried look on Kin's face since insulting one's master could result in being punished by him or her. Hey, said Ino getting off the ground, as she looked at the two, and taking clear offense to what Kin said. What about her Naruto-sama? Said Kin, as it was clear that Ino couldn't be let out of the estate since she would blab to everyone what she saw, and it would not be good for Naruto if they did. We'll have to handle this through the Hokage. Knowing the old man, he's still armed deep in paperwork, and won't be happy that he's stuck doing it. You stay here with Ino until we get you, as we are going to get Ino's father so he can become informed of Ino has done, and we take our case before the old man, said Naruto, as he quickly tied Ino up with webbing around her ankles her elbows, and each of her hands to prevent her from doing hand signs. What th eep, said Ino, as she wobbled, and then fell over onto her side while trying to struggle against the webbing Naruto had her tied up in. Make sure Ino doesn't leave until we get back with her father so he sees what we tell him is the truth, said Naruto before he webs Ino's mouth to prevent any of her screams of protest since he liked his home noise free with the exception being certain things that the public shouldn't see. As you wish Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she saw Naruto leaving through a window, and Webb swinging over to the Yamanaka clan home to speak to the blonde male responsible for siring Ino. How did I get myself into this? Thought Ino, as she tried to struggle some more, but had found herself being moved onto her back by Kin, and saw the look of displeasure written on it. You have a lot of nerve entering Naruto-sama's home. What's more as I know that you heard him talk about the QB sealed inside of him, which no doubt caused you to take a step back, trip, and fall to make us aware of you watching what we were doing. I may be Naruto-sama's slave, but even I have some right to protect myself, or punish those that try to see my body without my master's permission," said Kin, as she saw the blonde girl look up at her in shock, and wondered what to do with intruder. I should have brought Sakura so at least this way, Naruto can be distracted by her, and her giant forehead while I could have made my escape, thought Ino, as she tried to move again only for Kin to put her foot on the captured girl's stomach that wasn't covered by webbing. Don't move. When Naruto-sama gets back here with your father, we're going to see the Hokage, and you are going to explain just why you were in my master's home. Said Kin with her foot pressing more on Ino's thin stomach and the former sound shinobi realized this girl was just like the pink-haired one in the forest of death that was her master's teammate. Silently giving Ino a once-over, Kin saw this girl worried more about her figure than that of her shinobi skills when it was clear she was from a clan home, and that in itself was just sad in her mind. The girl was probably afraid of getting fat if she ate too much or she wanted to impress some boy like that Uchiha if what Naruto had told her about the two fangirls was true. That was real shame actually in Kin's mind, as she knew that all Ino had to do was train hard, and she could easily burn whatever fat she stored up after eating whatever food she ate. Ino, said Inoiki, as Ino's father appeared in a poof with Naruto, and the old Hokage with him to see the girl in her current situation. As we told you Inoiki, your daughter is here and not in her bed like her curfew would have her be, said Naruto, as he saw pleading look Ino was giving her father, and how she tried with immense failure thanks to Kin to squirm her way over to him. I think we better take this to my office before things get out of hand, said the Hokage before the all went poof and were now in the Hokage's office. Heck dead and jskhdhdhdh, said Ino, as she tried to speak behind the webbing with the entire group was hearing gibberish, 
and Naruto removed the webbing so the Yamanaka could speak clearly. That's better, said Naruto throwing the webbing away knowing it would dissolve into nothing in a few hours. Naruto Baka. When I get out of this stuff, I'm going to beat you up, and launch an all-out assault on your mind, said Ino, as she was feeling pretty confident right now with her father in the room, and how he could have the Hokage punish Naruto for tying her up like this. Do you want to tell Ino old man or should we? Seeing how she already knows about the QB when Ken and we were, together, we do not expect this to be too difficult, and that you do what needs to be done, said Naruto, as he looked at the Hokage, and saw him nod at this. Ino-san, what you did violate several Konoha laws under the articles drafted during the days of the Shadan, and the clan heads at the time coming to an agreement that was responsible for the clans to help create this village. These laws pertain to a clan member entering illegally into another clan's home, as you just did not too long ago, and the very punishments that exist to be carried out are in some cases worse than death, said the Sandaime, as he saw Ino now looking at him with wide eyes, and it was clear this was something she didn't know. Can I elaborate for her Hokage-sama? The day Iruka talked about this, my daughter was out sick, and missed the lecture despite the fact that she told me she learned from one of the other students at the academy, said Inoiki seeing his daughter look away in shame at that since she was going to ask someone, but the problem was that Sakura was going to go stalk Sasuke at the time, and she wanted to go with her. So when Ino's father asked if she did get caught up and in reality she didn't, the only thing she could do was what all children do to avoid punishment. She lied. Go ahead Inoiki said the Hokage sitting back in his chair while looking at all the paperwork he still had to go through and thought he could hear it all laughing at him. Maybe he needed to cut back on his smoking? Ino, the rules behind the functioning of each of the clans in Konoha is a set of very strict laws that the clan heads of Konoha during the days of the Shadaim set up to ensure that each clan would pledge their loyalty to Konoha, and to ensure the village would thrive. After many weeks turned months, the laws concerning the village clans had finally been finished after the clan heads with the Shadaim secured the final law that pertained to a clan's security. Each clan was granted a means of privacy, as well as rights that prevented the Hokage from interfering in their private clan rituals, or the traditions they created for their clan. One such was the punishing of intruders that came from another clan should they be attempting to learn secrets that pertain to that clan. Like the Uchiha clan trying to learn about the Inuzuka clan's family jutsus in hopes of countering them with their Sharingan being an example. Such things are not tolerated in Konoha and what you did Ino is a very serious offense that could warrant you to stop being a shinobi altogether or even your own death, said Inoiki, as he saw his daughter look at him with surprise, and then fear since she didn't want either to happen to her. What? I don't want to stop being a shinobi or even die for that matter, said Ino, as she felt it was unfair that she didn't know that Naruto was part of a clan and that only now when she did something supposedly wrong did she get punished for it. Regardless Ino, what you did was stupid, irresponsible, and at the moment has placed you at the mercy of one, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, said Inoiki, as he had been told along with the other clan heads about this in secret away from the other councils, and was glad they didn't know since they would have ultimately used the boy for their own ends or just killed him. Namikaze? Like the Yondaime? Wait. That means that Naruto is the, the, said Ino, as she looked at Naruto with his mask off, and after seeing the image of the Yondaime from her memory of it when she was younger to his it hit her like punch from Sakura's fist. The son of the Yondaime. You have entered illegally into the Namikaze clan home that Naruto currently occupies with his slave Tsuchi Kin, said the Inoiki seeing his daughter looking down with sad, fear-consumed eyes, and Yamanaka clan head looked at the old Sarutobi for help. Sadly, the old Hokage could do nothing, but shake his head, as the punishment that was to be delivered was ultimately up to Naruto, and Hiruzen didn't dare to even guess the thoughts of the young Namikaze. So what happens to me now? I mean, what kind of punishment am I getting? Said Ino, as she looked from the Hokage to her father, who looked to Naruto, and the boy ran a hand through his blonde spiky hair. Since Ino knows about the Kyubi, we feel that while death is a possible punishment, it shouldn't be done since it would only incite a riot with the people of the village, and since she now knows another S-class secret, it would be best if she not become a civilian. However, because of what Ino did, we also feel she shouldn't be a shinobi anymore, and that there is only one option left for her to take at this point, said Naruto seeing Ino's eyes now watering up at his words and realized how much she focused on keeping herself thin when she wasn't focusing on Sasuke. Are you sure? Please Naruto-sama? Surely you could, could let us pay you some form of tribute? Money? Justice that aren't clan related? Said Inoiki, as he knew what it was that Naruto was suggesting, and also knew his wife was going to kill him before going after Naruto. What? What is Naruto suggesting? 
said Ino, as she looked from her father to Naruto, and the back to her father before she saw Ken smirking at her like she knew. That you become his second slave Ino-san, said the Hokage, as he saw the girl's eyes widen in further horror, and then began crying her eyes at the thought of being someone's slave. What? No. I will not be his slave. Never. 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 Never, yelled Ino at her highest volume possible and the Hokage was once more grateful he put up the sound barrier to keep her voice from leaving the room. You have no choice Ino. It's either this or you become a civilian with your mind erased or the third option being death by public execution for breaking several S-class laws that the two councils won't be able to turn over, said Inoiki, as he saw his daughter look at him in shock once more, and then at the Hokage seeing him nod his head in agreement. If you choose to become a civilian, your chakra will be sealed off, and your father will have to erase all your memories of you being a member of the Yamanaka clan before having you become a ward of the village. Thus you would be an orphan like Naruto was for most of his life with a simple job somewhere in the village and would not know any of your friends from the academy. They wouldn't be able to talk to you like they knew you, they would have to start all over again like you would, and would be forbidden from telling you of your past life, said the Hokage seeing Ino taking in her options since that was the price of not being a slave or being executed. And if I'm a slave? Said Ino, as she needed to learn what that entailed since she didn't want to lose her memories of her friends, and getting killed was out of the question for her. Like Kin, you wouldn't be a shinobi anymore per se, but that doesn't mean you can't train to get stronger to protect your newsmaster, or his home for that matter if it's ever invaded. However, since you are not the first slave of Naruto's, you will have to follow an additional set of rules made should someone in a clan have more than one, and they are important to know, said the Hokage, as he saw Inoiki look at Naruto with pained eyes, and the Namikaze knew that the man was concerned for his daughter. Like what? Said Ino, as she looked at the Hokage, and knew he would know being as old as he was. For instance, when Naruto is not around to give you orders, Kin will be, as she will be empowered by Naruto, and become his head concubine. Meaning that while Kin is still his slave, you are also her slave too in a sense, and when Naruto is out on missions the head concubine is in charge of the home, said the Hokage, as he looked at Naruto, who was processing all of this in his head, and wondered if the boy was getting things too fast. So I'm the slave slave? But Naruto ultimately decides things right? Said Ino, as she saw Naruto nod his head at her, and she realized he had been silent through most of this. Yes. We do not abuse others Ino-chan. Surely what you saw tonight is proof enough of that, said Naruto, as he saw Ino's face turn red from the memory, and so did her father along with the Hokage since they had been given the straight-to-point conversation when he first spoke to them about the Yamanaka girl's invasion of his home. Well, what do I have to lose? I mean, I can't have my memories erased since I will lose the friendship I have with the others, and being publicly executed would bring shame to my family. Not that this hasn't already done so to my father, who looks ready to die from the fact he'll have to tell mom and hope she doesn't die from a heart attack after killing him for not trying hard enough to this, thought Ino, as she closed her eyes, and focused on all her option while deciding on the lesser of three evils at this point. What is your decision Ino? Said Inoiki, as he saw his little girl look at him again with calm serious looking eyes, and he knew she had made possibly the best choice of the three given. I'll be his slave. I'll be Naruto's slave, said Ino, as she looked at her father's face, and saw him nod in understanding with a small smile on his face that told her she had made the right call. Very well. Since it's late, I'll let Ino go home with her father, and have him bring her to me tomorrow to begin the process, said the Hokage, as he saw Inoiki, and Ino nod at this since this would be the last night the girl would sleep as free person did. After they left, it was just Naruto, Kin, and the Hokage in the room with a silence that lasted for what seemed like forever. Her mother isn't going to be happy with us, said Naruto, as he had met the woman once, and the look she gave him had spoken volumes in what she thought of him. Yes and no doubt she'll try to see me about stopping this. Now if I could only get this damn paperwork done, said the Hokage, as he looked at the pile that would no doubt waiting for him tomorrow, and the pile that would be on top of it in the morning. Why not use shadow clones? Said Naruto smirking at the Hokage, who looked at him like he had just found the secret to eternal life, and was giving it to old fire shadow. Of course. Minato you brilliant asshole. That was your secret the whole time, yelled the Hokage, as he was finally free of the damn chains that had held him to this task, and made two shadow clones to get through the remaining paperwork before him. Just remember you owe us again old man, said Naruto before turning into his venom form, opened the window, and motioned for Kin to come to him so they could go home. Of course. Name it. Anything you want, I'll try to grant, and see it happen, said the old man, 
who was more than willing to help the boy since he just solved the most evil thing a Hokage can do outside of killing off an entire clan within the village, and having the said killer become a missing nin to infiltrate an evil organization bent on world domination. Naruto told him and took off with Kin Web swinging home while Sarutobi left in a poof with a grin on his face as he recalled Naruto's request. Don't tell anyone our last name is Namikaze until after we win against Neji. We want to see the look on the people's faces when they learn the truth. Shonin exam finals a few days later, the day was an exciting day for everyone in Konoha, as people were gearing up for the matches taking place in the stadium with bets being placed, and high-priced clients in their seats waiting for prospective shinobi showing off their skills. The rumors behind each match were also growing, as people thought Hayuga Neji would win given his title as a prodigy, and how he was from the noble Hayuga clan making his chance of victory even higher against the academy dead last that was Uzumaki Naruto. That wasn't the only rumor, as it was also rumored that a secret marriage was set up between Aburame Shino, and Subaku no Tamari with the fight being a formality by both families to see if each child was worthy of the other. Konkuro had heard that particular rumor before laughing at Tamari's misfortune, only to have himself get hammered into the ground by his big sister, and her iron fan with a big emphasis on the iron part that she used to hit him with. Currently, all participants were in the arena to await the arrival of the Kazekage, who was not really the Kazekage at all but rather Orochimaru in disguise, and only a few people knew of this. Including, the Hokage himself, but the old man knew not to tip the hand he had against his former student, and knew that in order for his trap to work, Orochimaru would have to spring his first, and when it happened the snake would find himself not the predator, but rather the prey. Where's Ino? She should be here, said Sakura, as she was sitting with her teammate that was her not-so-secret crush, and her sensei sitting behind her with his book in hand. The rookies that didn't make it to the finals all sat together with their senseis to cheer on their friends and hope that they were able to pass to qualify to being a chonin. Ino's not here because Ino isn't, a shinobi anymore, said Asuma, as he had been told the specifics by his old man, and couldn't believe Ino had done something so stupid like what she did a few days ago. She quit? Said Sakura, as she knew that wasn't Ino at all, and wondered what happened to make her give up being a shinobi. No. It's complicated. Talk to Naruto after the finals and he'll tell you if he feels like it, said Asuma, as he lit his sig, and ran a hand through his short hair. An emergency meeting for the rookie 9, plus guy was called, and the Hokage had explained the situation to the group about what happened with Ino. Kurunai was a little peeved at this since she didn't want anything perverse to happen to Ino given how this village was filled with male perverts, and she was unsure of Naruto's intentions towards the Yamanaka girl. Asuma was stunned since his team had been effectively disabled and would need to find a possible replacement. Guy was stunned though he went on about flames of youth and how he was sure that Naruto would treat Ino right if he already had one slave on his care that was happy. The other rookies looked at each other in surprise, then at each of their senseis, who all had nodded in full agreement since they knew, with the exception being Kakashi since he was late to the meeting, and missed out on a few key things about his only student in the exam finals. In the stadium grounds, Naruto eyed his opponent Tujinan down, and saw Neji looking back with a smirk on his face knowing it would upset the Namikaze. It succeeded, but Naruto wasn't going to let that get to him, as he knew that was what the Hayuga wanted, and kept a cool face even though Kyuubi was telling him to rip the Hayuga to pieces for what he did to Hinata. Speaking of Hinata, Naruto looked up towards the stands to see Hinata sitting in front of her sensei next to Kiba having been freed by Aviki after an extensive investigation, and he saw she was looking at him with hope, yet with worry all the same. She wanted him to win, but Hinata also didn't want Neji to be hurt to the point that her cousin would once more blame family for this, and take it out on her since she never used the cage bird seal on another member of her clan. Well, technically Hinata had used it once, but that was only because she was ordered to so she would know the hand sign for it, and after she had used it on the branch member that was her test subject she quickly apologized to him. Once the elder teaching her had left the room of course since had she done so sooner would have made the elder frown down upon her being. She wants you to be merciful to this arrogant whelp. My version of mercy would be to kill him now rather than leave him alive without his senses to guide him through life, said the QB, as he hated arrogant humans, and wished Kami had wiped out the entire species from the earth. I have an idea on what to do. Can I count on you to counter Neji's gentle fist strikes when he seals off my chakra points? Not that I won't need them, thanks to Venom, but I'd rather I not feel like I've been stabbed with hundreds of invisible needles, and feel a lot of pain, thought Naruto, as he found it interesting he said I rather than we in his mind and went on the assumption that since it was his mind he would always be like that in his head. Do foxes hunt rabbits? Said QB, as he drooled, and licked its lips at the thought of munching on a rabbit the size of the Hokage Tower. Welcome everyone to Konoha's Chonin exams. 
As you know these exams are done to test Janan in order to see if they are worthy rising up in rank to Chonin. This is a match that is to be enjoyed as it will be to watch since we have quite a degree of candidates here for the Chonin exam finals. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the fights that are about to take place, said the Hokage, as he heard cheers within the stands, and the feudal lords looking on with excitement. Especially since Sarutobi had let it slip to a few of them Naruto's real name and got their blood pumping with excitement not knowing the crowd would think it was for Neji or Subaku no Gara. Would Uzumaki Naruto and Hayuga Neji stay here while the others go to the fighter's box above to wait for their matches, said Genma, as he had taken over for the sickly Jounin, who had been seeing to the defense of Konoha with his girlfriend in Anbu, and made sure that Suna's invasion was nullified from outside of Konoha's walls. With all, but the two Janan leaving the arena floor, and wondering why a large portion of the people watching were giving Naruto angry stares the fighters went to the fighter's box. As they waited, they saw Naruto transform into his humanized venom form, and saw the shocked looks from the crowd with some whispering to themselves that the demon could change into something else along with other things too. That form won't help you. It is fate that you lose to me, said Neji, who knew better than to use his Byakugan to read the boy's emotions, and trying to see the chakra network that Naruto had. If we hear one more word from you about fate, we're going to shove our foot so far up your ass, we're going to use you like a shoe, and walk around Konoha to find something to walk properly with to counterbalance, said Naruto seeing Neji scowl at that since no one outside of the boy's own clan had ever talked down to him like that. Now there's a guy with some balls. Wish the thought of getting a boyfriend was done at a better time. Maybe Gara will let me have him after the invasion is over and I can have him as my prized boy toy, thought Tamari, as she licked her lips slightly, and wondered just how skilled the boy was outside of being a shinobi. I'm going to enjoy crushing you in front of Hinata-sama. The doctor said she should have been out a week before the exams, but by some miracle she got better, and the pain she felt in her chest had left her. When asked if she had any visitors lately, Hinata-sama turned bright red, and fainted like she normally does when around you, said Neji, as he got into his gentle fist stance, and then activated the Byakugan to help defend against Naruto's attacks. Are you going to say what you want to say or are we going to do it for you? We are the reason why Hinata-chan got better and how it happened is not something we would tell to the one who would betray his own blood for petty revenge, said Naruto motioning with his right hand for Neji to come at him before turning the hand into a fist with a certain finger sticking up that made the Hyuga prodigy red in the face. Why is that boy making that gesture father? Said Hanabi in the stands and Hyuga Hyashi wished he could melt into the floor right now. Um, Uzumaki-san is just showing everyone why he thinks he's a number one in this fight, said Hyashi, as he hoped that would be a good answer for the time being, and hoped it would hold out until Hanabi grew up into a mature Hayuga adult. So I should do that too when I fight someone? Said Hanabi, as she had seen what finger it was, and wondered if she could do it. No. I mean, it's not something you should do Hanabi since the Hayuga clan does not need to do such things to prove we are the strongest among clans, said Hyashi while he mentally patted himself on the back for that knowing Hanabi would listen to him and not do it after that. For now anyway. Neji on the other hand was irate that this, this commoner had made an obscene gesture towards him and expected to actually win this fight. Charging forward, Neji knew where to strike when it came to Naruto's body, as the body had hundreds of chakra points on it, and all Neji had to do was simply try hitting one by chance. If not, then all the angered Hayuga had to do was aim at the Namikaze's intestinal tract and shred all the organs to pieces. Naruto seeing Neji coming at him, leapt away a good 20 feet before landing in a crouch, and wagged a finger at the Hayuga boy. Neji, not one to be stopped in his quest once he set his sights on it, continued to charge forward with his right hand cocked back ready to fire his chakra-covered appendage into the spider-like warrior before him. You do know that the one thing the Hayuga pride themselves on is Taijutsu, right? So all we have to do is stay away from you and hit you long range until we finally hit our mark, said Naruto, as she shot web balls at Neji who used his bloodline to dodge them while still trying to get within range of striking the Namikaze, and hurting him. You cannot hit me with those, as my Byakugan can see it coming, and I can evade them all with ease, said Neji, as he moved faster, and almost got within striking distance when Naruto shot a web line behind him to the wall allowing him to reach the safety of it for the time being. You do know that we know much more than just shooting webs right? The entire month leading up to this point we have been training for the single purpose of knocking you on your ass. Now that we have our chance, we will act upon it, and do what we must for you to understand what price you must pay for betray your own blood, said Naruto before he went through hand signs while Neji had rushed up the wall to meet him. You won't get a chance too, said Neji, as he had high level chakra control, and running up a wall was not impossible for him to do. Fool. Fire style, firebomb jutsu. 
said Naruto, as he leapt off the wall now in mid-jump, his back towards the crowd, and his masked face shooting a fireballs the size of super-sized Akimichi at a surprise Neji. Neji seeing his life nearly flash before his eyes, jumped off the wall landing hard on the ground, and rolled along hard dirt beneath him while biting back a groan of pain from landing hard on his shoulder causing it to be dislocated. Looking up, Neji quickly moves, as debris from the wall came down around him, and only by moving did he avoid being hit by any of it. You, you nearly killed me, said Neji before forcing his shoulder back into place and saw Naruto shrug like he was saying so what? To the Hyuga prodigy. Oops. What did you expect us to do in this fight? Roll over and die? We're not one of your pathetic family members that thinks that it's fate when something happens to them and just accepts it. There is only one Hyuga in Konoha right now that doesn't accept fate and you're not her, said Naruto, as he looked to Hinata, who was blushing, and let out a squeak of a noise at being mentioned. Hokage Booth, the boy is very skilled Hokage-sama. I was under the impression that he was the dead last at your academy. What has changed? Said Orochimaru disguised as the Kaze Kage while watching the battle become interesting. Naruto has had some unique changes in his life and finally got a proper teacher to learn from when it comes learning though that is a secret that I can't tell you Kaze Kage-sama, said Sarutobi, who looked at his former pupil in disguise, and smiled playfully like he would if it was the real Kaze Kage sitting next to him. A proper teacher? I thought he was on the same team as the Uchiha? Surely Hitake Kakashi, who was the Yondaime's own student would have taught both boys something, and helped in the young Uzumaki's training, said the Kaze Kage, as he tried to learn more about this situation by avoiding the topic of Naruto's mysterious sensei, and the one that the boy had before to find the current. Sadly, Hitake-san has only taught the Uchiha, and has yet to teach his team anything while whole. Hopefully, Naruto will win the finals, and allow me to promote him to the rank of Chonin, said Sarutobi, as he had every intention of promoting Naruto after this whether the boy won or lost the finals, and clean up the councils once this whole thing was over. Really? The Uchiha's development doesn't really show then since he lost to the eldest of my three children during the preliminaries if from what their sensei reported to me, said the Kaze Kage, as he had been quite surprised that Sasuke had lost, and quite upset that it ruined his plans to nab him without his sensei being close by. The Uchiha expects everyone to hand everything to him because he is considered the last loyal Uchiha in the leaf. If he wasn't so arrogant, the boy would have made it to the finals today, and possibly facing your son, said the Hokage, as he saw Gara watching the fight below, and looked down to see Neji trying to adjust his footing so he wouldn't be wobbling so much. Stadium ground, her? You mean Hinata-sama? That weak poor excuse for a main family member? She is a spoiled child that knows nothing of what the branch family has to go through, said Neji, as he removed his headband to show Naruto, and the crowd the cage bird seal on his forehead. We heard all of this before from Hinata-chan. Boohoo, you lost your father, and you've been suffering under the oppression of the main family ever since. Grow up, said Naruto before moved with surprising speed and socked Neji right in face sending the boy skidding a good 15 feet. What did he just say? Thought Neji, as he got up from the ground, and spit out some of the blood in his mouth. You had a family your whole life while we did not. You were not hated, beaten, and scorned for something you had no control over. We were. You say you know of suffering at the hands of other, but you were never beaten up on your birthday, or had that bitch of an orphanage overseer try to poison you when you were a child. We were, said an angry Naruto, as he let his demonic venom form be revealed to all, and brought gasps if not shrieks from the entire crowd that saw it. What? Said Neji, as he couldn't believe someone would do that to child, and the killer intent radiating off of Naruto making it seem all the more true. You wish to make Hinata-chan suffer. Now we will do the same to you. All we can say to you now is, brace yourself for suffering, said Naruto before he moved faster than anyone could see, but Neji knew he had to act fast, and tried to start the kaiten with the attempt crushed instantly when a clawed hand on Neji's fear-covered face lifting the prodigy into the air while still running. He's faster than Lee is without his weights. Thought Neji, as his hands was wrapped around the large hand that was on his face, and was then slammed into the ground while Naruto was still running. Naruto ran dragging Neji by his face through the earth, up the stadium, and jumped high into the air spinning during this moment in mid-air. In that moment, no one breathed, as they saw this creature, this thing holding Hayuga Neji by his head, and only inhaled a deep breath when they saw Naruto throw Neji into the ground creating his massive crater. How do you want to die Neji? Do you want us to tear apart your flesh piece by piece? 
Maybe we should use our powers to stall the seal on your forehead long enough to take out your eyes and give them to Kumo in exchange for something nice, said Naruto, as he grinned evilly at Neji while being more venom than Naruto at the moment, and saw the look of fear in the Hyuga's eyes when crouched down in front of the large crater. Why you wouldn't, said Neji, as that was the one thing that the Hyuga clan fear most, and the fact that Naruto may have the power to do what the seal prevented was something that brought fear into the core of the prodigy's soul. We can. And we will. Unless of course, you stop being such a total dick, and you start acting like the boy Hinata-chan knew when she was younger. If you don't, we will take out your eyes, and hand them to the rakage personally for him to have a look at. Do we have a deal? Said Naruto, as he saw the broken form of Neji look into the sky, and saw the boy was in deep thought. Hinata-sama, after all I've done you would still wish to treat me like an equal, and not that of simple branch family member. For so long I hated you because I thought you were some spoiled child that would use the branch family like a shield and abuse the seal like so many have in the past, thought Neji, as he looked over at Naruto, who was waiting for an answer, and seemed to have returned to the humanized venom form with a bird flying above him free to embrace the sky. You have a deal Naruto-san. Proctor, I cannot continue the match so I forfeit, said Neji before Naruto covered his body in webbing and pulled him out of the ground to hand over to the medic. Winner of the first match of the Chonin exams is Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, said Genma, as he saw the shocked faces in the crowd over the fact that Naruto won, and that the proctor just said the boy they had all hated was Namikaze. That can't be right, said one person in the stands, as more erupted with yells, and other things about Naruto nor really being a Namikaze. He's not a Namikaze, he's a demon. Called out another person, a woman several rows above the rookies in the stands, and it was making several of them frown. Silence, said the Sandaime, as he finally stood up not being able to take this crap from the people anymore, and caught everyone, including Orochimaru, off guard by his outburst. This will be good, thought Naruto, as he smiled while transforming into his usual black clothes that looked like he was a part of Anbu, and folded his arm while waiting gleeful anticipation. What you are all about to hear is a secret of this village that was originally done for the good of the very person the stadium to protect him from those outside the village while at the same time remove my own law regarding the boy since it has done more harm than good. For as long as this boy has lived, you have long since despised him for the burden he carries, and you do not even give him a chance to show you just how wrong you are about him. The Yondaime's dying wish was for this boy to be seen as a hero for the QB that is sealed inside of him and what do you do? You do everything you can to make Naruto's life miserable when you don't even try to acknowledge what it was the Yondaime wanted for his only son. Do you really think he would put the burden on any orphan child? You arrogant fools think so little of the boy when you praise his father like he was Kami himself. As Naruto so kindly put it to Hayuga Neji, grow up, said Sarutobi leaving a stunned stadium in awe at what the man had just said and did in front of this entire audience of people. With that said, the old Hokage went back to his chair and sat down while letting out a heavy sigh like he had kept that bottled up inside for well over a decade. Waving off the jounin next to him, he looked at Naruto, who nodded to the old man before walking back to the fighter's box, and prepared to become bombarded by questions by his fellow Leaf Shinobi. Minato-sensei had a son? How could that be possible? He never told me. Then again he was with that Kushina woman a lot. There has to be some kind of mistake. Thought a shocked Kakashi, as he had dropped his book, and looked from the Hokage to Naruto while feeling a great deal of shame at what he did. Well Kakashi my old rival, it seems your time neglecting Naruto has come to bite you in the preverbal butt, and now when he will no doubt be promoted after this you will lose your chance to teach him, said Guy finding that it was unfair of Kakashi to favor the Uchiha like he did after the preliminaries even when the Cyclops told him that the old Sandaime had given Naruto another teacher. Shut up Guy. Had I known, I would have taken care of Naruto, and raised him like he was my own, said Kakashi, as he was secretly fuming inside, and looked up at where Naruto was looking back him. And flipping him off. Choke on it you lazy favoritism showing bastard, thought Naruto grinning at the now eyebrow twitching Kakashi, who clearly didn't like being told off in that manner like Neji had been, and even more so by the son of his sensei. Next match will be Aburame Shino vs Subaku no Tamari, said Genma, as he felt he should continue the fights now before something else happened, and ruins the exams like the impending invasion for one. Proctor, I forfeit, said Shino, as he had his suspicions about the Suna siblings from the start, knew that even after training for this moment for a whole month that he couldn't defeat the Suna girl. The odds of beating the puppet user were much higher than the one Shino calculated against Tamari. Unfortunately, the people in the stadium didn't seem to approve of his choice, and began booing him for it since it made the Leaf look like cowards. Okay. 
This Aburame Shino forfeit, Subaku no Tamari is the winner, and will move on to the next round. The next matchup is Subaku no Konkuro vs Isis 1010, said Genma knowing that the boy would suspect something was wrong being a clan prodigy himself. Proctor, I too wish to forfeit, said Konkuro, as he had no desire to be in a fight with the weapon user when the time for the invasion was drawing near. Okay. With Subaku no Konkuro forfeiting, the winner of the match is Isis 1010, and she will advance to the next round. The next match is Subaku no Gara vs Rock Lee, said Genma looking a little irritated by the two forfeits, but kept his cool when he saw Gara arrive at the arena floor, and Rock Lee soon after. So Naruto-kun, who do you think is going to win? Said Tenten to Naruto's left, as she was pleased yet angry that she didn't get to prove herself in this exam yet, but happy that she would still get her shot soon in the next set of matches after this one. Hard to say really. Lee's got the moves for close range, but we're sure many have tried to get close to Subaku no Gara to take him out, and failed miserably in doing so. Gara's sand make him have a pretty good defense, but it's only as good as the one that raises it, and if Lee can move fast enough, he may just win, said Naruto, as he looked at Ten Ten, who was nodding in agreement, and it seemed Gara was getting very anxious to fight Lee. That old Hokage of yours said you were the Yondaime's son. Was he right or is he just senile? Said Tamari, as she was leaning on the balcony to Naruto's right, and saw the cautious look Tenten was sending her. Yeah. My old man is the Yondame. Everyone in the village loves him for sealing away the Kyubi in us, but they hate us all for the same reason, and if it weren't for the fact they now know we're his son they would try to form a mob to crucify us. Now we expect apologies from them, with pleas of forgiveness, and them begging us for mercy for their past sins. Of course, we know that they won't mean it since they denied it right when the proctor announced our real last name, and if they could they would kill us like they've tried for so many years, said Naruto seeing the sad look that both girls now had on their faces. My little brother is hated for the same reason as you, but he can defend himself due to sand around him, and he's not afraid to kill those that stand in his way, said Tamari, as she saw Naruto nod at this, and the Suna girl suspected that the Namikaze knew about Gara's own tenant. Judging from the looks of his baggy eyes, Gara hasn't got a lot of sleep since he was first brought into this world, and the smell of blood coming off of him tell us that he's been feeding his demon a lot over the years. How strong is his seal? Said Naruto, as he saw Tamari about to answer, but Konkuro stopped her, and glared at him. It's none of your business. Stay out of it, said Konkuro, as he really didn't want anyone tampering with Gara's seal, and possibly make things worse. We were just asking because if the seal is too weak or unstable, it would easily explain your brother's current bloody lifestyle, and with a seal master the one on Gara could be corrected, said Naruto seeing Tamari's eyes widen in shock, as she was always told the seal was done that way to bring out the full potential in Gara, and it was done to make her brother stronger. You know this to be for a fact? Said Tamari, as she had always cared about her little brother, and seeing him act like a monster tore her up inside. Yep. We also happen to know one such seal master. We also know about the invasion you three are taking part in, said Naruto seeing Tamari and Konkuro pale while Tenten drew one of her weapons. W what? Said Tamari, as she backed away from Naruto, and saw him still staring down at the fight taking place between Gara and Lee. Lee was holding his own right now, but it looked like the poor boy was getting a bit tired from trying to wear down Gara, and Gara himself while taking a few hits had endured whatever Lee dished out. You heard us Tamari-chan. Now we know your brother down there is involved, but if you convince him to help us fend off your Suna comrades, we will strengthen his seal, and help him with his insomnia, said Naruto, as he saw the blonde pigtailed girl looking at him while deep in thought, and she wondered if she could do that. On one hand she would be betraying her village, but on the other she would be helping her little brother, and possibly give him a life outside of being a psychopathic killer that was possessed by a psycho sand demon sealed inside of his body. Her thoughts on the matter were interrupted when Tamari heard a scream from Gara, and upon turning to the arena ground she saw him spitting out his blood. After Lee had taken off weights he apparently had on, the boy went super fast compared to before, and landed several solid punches to Gara's jaw followed by a spinning kick that broke through the sand armor around his skin. Gara had never seen his blood before so it was only natural that it freaked the red-haired kid out, and given Shukaku of the sands was inside his head didn't help much either for rational thinking. My blood. You made me bleed. Now I'm going to do the same to you, yelled Gara, as his body became covered in sand turning his arm into a demonic appendage that looked unnatural on the red-haired son of the Kazekage. Soon after that, an explosion was heard in the cage booth, and it had just begun to rain feathers that put people to sleep. Looks like the battle is starting. Now's the time to choose Tamari-chan. 
you either help your little brother or fight a battle that sound and Suna can't win, said Naruto, as he transformed into his venom form, and flexed his hands to get ready for combat. Tamari, we need to begin the plan, and help with the invasion, said Konkuro, as he had moved to use his puppets, but stopped when a kunai was pressed to his throat by Shino, and bugs from the boy were moving on to the puppet user ready to feast at any moment if given the silent command. If I help you, you swear on the honor of your feudal lord that you will have Gara's seal fixed so he can be sane again, and possibly have some form of normalcy, said Tamari, as she saw Naruto nod, and remove his mask to show he wasn't lying. Naruto-kun, you can't trust her. She's from another village, said Tenten, as she had always felt at odds with the girl during the month when they bumped into each other, and found it was more often than either girl liked. Tamari-chan's brother is suffering Ten-chan. Suffering we know all too well. Trust our judgment, said Naruto, as he looked in Ten-ten's direction, and she could see there was no point in arguing with the blonde demon vessel. Oh, I trust you Naruto-kun. It's this girl eyeing you that I don't trust, thought Ten-ten, as she had seen Tamari eyeing him like he was her favorite candy, and how they were aimed at his muscled body his strange black uniform with the spider symbol did little to hide. We swear it Tamari-chan. Now let's go calm down your brother before he makes a real mess of things, said Naruto, as he has his mask back on, and ready to handle her little brother currently looking more monstrous with each passing second. Right, said Tamari, as they both leapt down to the arena floor where Gara was along with Genma, Lee, and Suna sibling sensei known only as Baki with them. The exams were over and the battle for Konoha's survival had begun.